Well, hello, church. It's Pastor Jeremy coming to you from the Parsonage with another weekly devotion. This week, we continue our tour of the stained glass windows at the Court Street United Methodist Church as we take a closer look at the Peacemaker window in the Court Street Prayer Chapel. In the Prayer Chapel, we find a series of eight windows inspired by the eight Beatitudes, the blessings that Jesus gave at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. In the seventh window in the series, we find these words, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. In the upper portion of the window, we find a powerful image of peacemaking that comes straight from the pages of Scripture. In the beginning chapters of the book of the prophet Isaiah, God speaks to the people of Judah. God warns that the people have lost their way. They pray and sing and worship and continue to hold religious festivals and make sacrifices, but they have failed to live as God would have them live. Widows and orphans are going hungry. The poor are being oppressed. A time of war and violence is coming, God warns. That time of suffering will be a wake-up call for God's people. But then God speaks a word of hope. That time of violence and bloodshed won't be the end of the story. After all of the hurting and pain will come the day of the Lord. And on the day of the Lord, the people will embrace justice and peace. The Lord will make Jerusalem a center of wisdom and true faith. People from all around the world will come to Jerusalem to learn a new way of living. And in that day, God says, They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The image of swords being turned into farm tools, the instruments of destruction being turned into instruments of life, is one of the most powerful and hopeful images in all of Scripture. Other prophets repeated these words of Isaiah when they talked about the coming of God's kingdom and the work of the Messiah. These words have provided inspiration for many people for thousands of years, including my friend Corey. Corey Simon is a United Methodist pastor who decided to put the words of the prophet Isaiah into practice. He took blacksmithing classes in order to learn how to turn weapons of violence into instruments of peace. I've invited Corey to say a few words about what he does and why he does it. Here's what Pastor Corey has to say. Hi, my name is Corey Simon. I'm the pastor at the Martin and Shelbyville United Methodist Churches on the west side of the state. And I was invited here to tell you a bit about the art that I do and how I do it. And I'm going to be sharing in a few moments some of the video of a project that I did just for this, um, and hopefully you'll find that interesting. So what I do is I do art related to blacksmithing, particularly uh, guns into garden tools. I am part of an organization uh, that spans the country known as Raw Tools or the Raw Tools Network, which you can look up. And we take donated guns and we turn them into garden tools uh, to remind us of that image from the prophets that we find in scripture of the day when they would turn, they would beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks and learn war no more. And so we don't really have swords anymore, but we do have a lot of guns in this country. And regardless of where we fall in terms of gun control, we can all agree that there's obviously something that needs to be done in regards to how it is that we treat guns in this country. And this is a way to kind of bring awareness to that and kind of give, have us rethink what it is that we do and how it is we do it. And so my hope is to allow us to dream, to allow us to think, to allow us to imagine a future where maybe there's a little less violence in the world. Maybe there's 
a little more work towards something better. So I began this with a handgun of my own that I took and I cut apart with an angle grinder and I turned into a small, uh, uh, a small hand tool. Uh, I've actually used this a few different times and it's actually quite sturdy and quite effective. And from there, I've made a number of other things from Maddox to spades and even a shovel and a hoe. Um, so those are just a few of the projects that I've done. Uh, like I said, again, to tease out this wind chime project, um, this is the first time that I've done something like this, but it probably won't be the last. Uh, it's something that I think people will find a lot of joy um, and a little bit of beauty out of. So I work with an organization out of Colorado called Raw Tools. And like I said, we're a small band of revolutionaries, maybe, uh, creative types who want to, as the organization says, disarm hearts. And the idea is to get us to imagine new ways to think about how it is that we solve and how it is that we deal with our conflicts, how it is that we deal with each other and consider how it is that we relate to one another. And so while it's easy when you have, when all you have is a hammer to see only nails, it's a little bit different when you replace that hammer with a shovel and suddenly you have to start thinking how it is that we work to do something different, to create, to grow, to fashion life instead of engaging in things that take life away. And so my hope that when you see this, you see some of the inspiration that I hope I bring to this. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you learn a thing or two. So one of the first things we need to do is we need to break down the barrel. We do this with an angle grinder. And as you can see, I cut the pieces about how I want them. I'll do some final cleaning up a little later. But for right now, I'm just getting the pieces a nice uniform length so that I can more easily work on it later. Now what I do here is I break out the drill press so that I can put the holes in to make it so that I have obvious places to attach the line and the string for later on when it's time to make the final ties with the wind chimes. Now we take the metal to the forge so that I can bend out the pieces. As you can see, I took the barrel and I cut it in a few spots so that I could then angle it out like this and have some nice ties. Which now that I have those in place, I can add a few extra guidelines so that it's not just the string hanging loose and flying all over the place when the wind blows, but rather it sticks pretty consistently where I want it to stick later on. So now that the barrel is exactly how I want it, now that the other pieces are exactly how I want them, I have to take the fishing line and tie it along with a few decorative beads so that I can have some nice uniform wind chime shapes and the traditional look that we are used to. Uh, this is mostly done off camera, unfortunately, but in a few moments you'll be able to see what it will look like.
And in the end, we find ourselves with a good looking and effective wind chime. It has a good sound, it has a good spin, and I'm pretty happy with it considering it's my first time. And in the end, it joins some of the other pieces that I've made since I've started this project about a year or so ago. I'm still learning. I'm still figuring this out as I go. But in the end, I'm doing something that gives me a feeling of purpose, a feeling of resistance, and a feeling of joy as I'm able to create and share with others. Now, if you're interested in what you just saw, if you're interested in learning more or maybe donating a gun so that I can use it in a future project, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Disruptive Disciple Blacksmithing. Well, thank you, Pastor Corey, for sharing a little bit of your ministry with us. And thank you for being one of God's peacemakers. Would you pray with me? God of peace and God of justice, you speak to us still today through the voices of the prophets. We pray for the day of the Lord to come, that there would be no more hurting and humanity would not learn war anymore. Through Jesus, the Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for spending a little bit of time with us today, and thank you for making peace wherever you are. You can find a new devotion right here every Wednesday at noon. Until we meet again, keep your mask on, keep your distance, and keep the faith.